Other Protestant churches stopped emphasizing hellfire so much. And uh, it became kind of a non-issue in a lot of, and, and people just made a class calculation. They could say, why should I go to the Universalist Church when I go to the Congregational Church where there's a better social class of people, you know? <laughs> there are more high status people there. Why, why go to them when I can go there and hear practically the same message? You know, so there was, that was one factor. The, the Universalists were notoriously disorganized. Um, their structure was almost entirely the state conventions. Each state had a convention. There was this national organization which had various names. It was ultimately called the Universalist Church of America. Before that, it was the Universalist General Convention. That was the most common name. Um, but the, uh, that's, that national office never had any real power. It was nothing like the UUA today. They, they didn't have any real power. All the power was in the states, so they were always disorganized. Um, that meant uh, if there's a, a big need for ministers in this state, the people in this other state, two states over, may not know about it. You know, that, that kind of thing. There's a wonderful anecdote about the Universalists in Newport, Rhode Island, back in the 1790s, who were so afraid of organization. They were just anti-organization for, for fear of the constraints that being organized always brings about. They were so fear that, that, that they refused for a while to even meet for services on Sundays because they felt that would lead to a religious organization. <laughs> so there was, there's always been this fear of organization or reluctance to be organized. So that's, that's a reason. There were many more Unitarians than Universalists, right? that's one factor. Many, many more, like five times as many or something like that. I think the numbers were 125,000 adult Unitarians and 25,000 adult Universalists. You know, that's five to one. So that's one thing. And uh, the Unitarians who were in control at the merger, right, the first president had been the president of the AUA, the first president of the UUA had been the president of the AUA. The Unitarians, generally speaking, saw the Universalists as following the same path, but not as advanced. Um, they, they saw Universalists as kind of Unitarian wannabes. You know, they were less educated, less prosperous people who believed in, in uh, individual freedom of belief, but they hadn't, they, they were not as sophisticated or advanced as we Unitarians. And, and so, because they, they thought of themselves as superior, they thought there was no reason to investigate universalism. There was no reason to look into it. It's just a more primitive form of Unitarianism. And so they didn't look into it, and because they didn't look into it, they didn't realize it was really different. It was a distinct approach to, to liberal religion than Unitarian. There were, there were differences between the two, but the Unitarians were unaware of that for the most part, because they just took it for granted. There was nothing to learn from those people.